Russian Defense Minister announces plan to resurrect a 3,000-year-old Scythian army through cloning. Science fiction has been a popular genre of novels and movies for decades, but as they say, reality is stranger than fiction. You would expect that cloning a three-millennia-old Scythian army would be something taken straight from the pages of a science fiction comic or an unusual episode of Black Mirror. But a Russian defense minister argues it is possible. Around 20 years ago, an archaeological marvel was uncovered in Siberia, Russia. Researchers and archaeologists found, buried deep within the earth and graven of the Tuva Republic, the skeletal remains of over 3,000-year-old warriors of Scythian descent with the bones of their mighty steeds. One could argue that these warriors had already done their part for humanity and deserved to peacefully lay in the afterlife, but Sergei Shoigu, a Russian defense minister, begs to differ. Sergei Shoigu has publicly announced his desire to take the remains of these surely great warriors from centuries past and clone them into a brand new military unit. Shoigu is a native of the Republic of Tuva and believes strongly in the possibility of raising a modern Scythian army to fight and defend Russia and all her territories. He revealed these unique intentions in an online meeting with the Russian Geographical Society. Alongside being a powerful member of the Russian Defense Committee of the government, he is also allegedly close with Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, and the two are supposed allies when it comes to governmental matters. As a result, there is a strong likelihood that Shoigu's ambitions will be funded or at least carefully considered before being cast aside. The Siberian permafrost allows for the preservation of DNA, which would make obtaining the Scythian DNA challenging but not impossible should they be able to find a chunk of surviving organic matter. For spiritual reasons, when the excavations of the Scythian warriors are planned, Shoigu has demanded that local shamans attend the excavations to appease the restless spirits of the Scythians and to try and gain their spiritual permission to clone them from the afterlife. It is believed by both Sergei Shoigu and many local people of the Tuva that otherwise the spirits of the warriors will be angered and rain terror on the living. If successful, Shoigu would be able to create an army of the living dead. However, some argue that the wild claims are not meant in true sincerity, but to play their role as a distraction that Russia recently sent out 100,000 of their soldiers to Ukraine's borders. When asked about how the excavations are going, Shoigu responded with, We have conducted several expeditions there already. It is a big international expedition. Shoigu has also made various references to the infamous case of Dolly the Sheep as proof that cloning is within the realm of possibility. There is no way of knowing how sincere the Russian ambitions are or if they are actually planning on resurrecting this classical army from their buried tombs, but there does seem to be reports of legitimate research being conducted related to the science of cloning and archaeological diggings. Lost Renaissance Masterpiece Discovered Hanging Above Woman's Hot Plate Sells for 26.8 million US dollars Sometimes things that are lost are hiding in the most unlikely of places, and occasionally they are even hiding in plain sight. This was the case with the recently discovered Renaissance artwork that had been considered lost to history. Philomene Wolf, a Parisian auctioneer, was tasked with evaluating the contents of a 90-year-old French woman's apartment in Compagne, and was immediately drawn to a small, old-looking piece of artwork that was hanging over her hot plate in the kitchen. She immediately knew that the painting, which is about 10 inches by 8 inches, was something special and suspected that it was a work of Italian primitivism, but had no idea exactly how valuable it would turn out to be. Wolf took the painting to Eric Turquin, an art historian with a track record of identifying difficult or long-lost works. After a thorough analysis, Turquin and a team of experts were all able to certify without a doubt that the artist of the painting was Seni de Pepo, also known as Simabu, who is one of the highly celebrated fathers of early Renaissance painting dating back to the 13th century. Simabu's paintings are incredibly rare, despite being considered a master of medieval painting, and historians only know of 11 of his paintings that currently exist, making this find even more impressive. Art historians were able to identify the painting as Christ-marked, 
a part of a diptych of eight scenes depicting the Passion and Crucifixion of Christ, likely as part of an altar scene that was separated and sold in the 18th century. Although prior to the discovery of Christ mocked, there were only two known panels from the diptych in existence, called The Virgin and Child with Two Angels and The Flagellation of Christ. This new discovery was able to be identified as a member of the set by looking at the wood grain that was consistent throughout all three pieces. Jerome Moncuquil, a part of the team that made the exciting identification, said that they were able to positively determine that the painting was not a clever copy by comparing the wood grain between the sets. They are all made with the same technique on the same wood panel so you can follow the grain of the wood through the different scenes, he reported. We also used infrared light to be sure the painting was done by the same hand. You can even see the corrections he made. Although there are only 11 known works by Simabu in existence, historians speculate that the altarpiece that Christ mocked was originally a part of contained eight panels, meaning that there could be five additional panel pieces left for discovery. The owner of the apartment where the painting was unknowingly hidden away was elderly and moving out of her apartment, and she had no idea that she had an incredibly rare and valuable artwork in her kitchen. She told reporters that she had thought it was a Greek icon painting and that it had been in her family for as long as she could remember. Despite having been hung over a hot plate used to cook food for all those years, experts reported that the painting is still in excellent condition, apart from minor accumulation of dust. Considering the fact that the painting was made around the year 1280, it is truly impressive that it was able to remain in such good condition for all this time and reminds us that you never know what might be lying in wait in some nondescript place for the right person to come along and uncover it. The Temple of Angkor Wat was bounded by a mysterious structure 1.5 kilometers long. In December of 2015, it was discovered that the world's largest religious monument is actually even bigger than we once thought among other brilliant insights provided by this research team. The Temple of Angkor Wat, located in Cambodia, Southeast Asia, has been thought of as the world's largest religious monument for hundreds of years, having been built in the 12th century, once at the heart of the Khmer Empire. Bringing a modern twist to this knowledge, however, is the work of a team of Australian archaeologists who have found we can actually expand the recorded size of the temple thanks to their use of ground-penetrating radar whilst investigating the Angkor Wat complex. The research mission, dubbed the Greater Angkor Project, was led by Australian researchers, Professor Roland Fletcher and Dr Damien Evans, who work with the University of Sydney. Their investigation revealed more components to the temple than we had previously known of, as well as the complex being bounded on the south side by a large structure adding to the previously recorded size of this record-holding temple. When speaking on behalf of the team, Professor Fletcher said this structure, which has dimensions of more than 1,500 meters by 600 meters, is the most striking discovery associated with Angkor Wat to date. Despite this being a fascinating finding, there is still plenty we are yet to uncover. To date, the purpose and function of the structure remains unknown and we are yet to find a parallel or otherwise similar structure in any other Angkorian works. Aside from the large, adjoined structure, the team also discovered buried towers that had been assembled and removed throughout the period, estimated to encompass the dates surrounding the construction and first uses of the temple at the Angkor Wat site. Even more new information has come to light as a result of this investigation, challenging the misconceptions surrounding the temple. For decades, centuries even, we had held the assumption that on the land neighbouring Angkor Wat stood similarly sacred precincts and cities of religious importance. However, this team has found there to be evidence of a sparse population's housing among these areas. The research team believe this could suggest residential use of the land, theories supported by the findings of roads, ponds and mounds. Current speculation says that these were all used by people working within the temple, in positions of service, largely such as priests. Another fascinating revelation made courtesy of this project is the discovery of wooden structures having been created to secure and strengthen Angkor Wat. 
Archaeologists predict that these wooden structures have been implemented towards the more modern end of the temple's history, leading Dr. Fletcher to describe it as a possible last attempt at defense, an opinion expressed through his statement. Angkor Wat is the first and only known example of an Angkorian temple being systematically modified for use in a defensive capacity. The placement of these defenses on a more modern timeline, estimated between 1297 and 1585 AD, suggests that the addition of the defenses could have been in an effort to resist the growing influence of the city Ayutthaya, a city nearby. Dr. Fletcher summarized with the concluding thoughts, Either data makes the defences of Angkor Wat one of the last major constructions at Angkor and is perhaps indicative of its end. This relatively recent insight into a temple so long out of use points to both the complexity of human civilization and the momentous discoveries that continue to lie ahead of us and the abundance of new leads and information to have come from one research team is a true testament to their important work. Denisovan's DNA reveals mystery of human evolution. We have long had an interest in those that came before us, and while the Neanderthals are spoken of somewhat with frequency, the Denisovans were only found to have existed in 2008. This recent discovery of their ancient existence has led to many shifting details in our understanding of human evolution. They have made an appearance in our archaeological field and have left a trail of new research in their wake. Even following their finding in 2008, our timeline stood to be corrected, with us believing they existed just 50,000 years ago. As of 2015, however, we found that this number was far too limiting, and that, despite initial understandings, the Denisovans had been hanging around and walking the Earth for what could easily have been tens of thousands of years longer. This age correction was the result of speculations surrounding the true age of some fossils that were key in understanding this species. DNA from the species was tested, obtained from a tooth fossil found in a southwestern Siberian cave. From this tooth fossil, alongside the other somewhat limited data we have so far on this species, researchers have been able to conclude that the Denisovans were more accurately walking the Earth a staggering 110,000 years ago. The director and co-author of the study, Svante Pabo from the Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, said in an interview with CS Monitor, We got the first glimpse of genetic variation in Denisovans, and it turns out they have quite a bit of variation, about as much as Neanderthals. The tooth fossils looked at were determined to be from two separate people, with one of them having been alive a significant length of time before the other. This was determined by the missing mutations within the genes, giving us further insight into where these specific genes may have come from. Despite some people's theories, the Neanderthals and Denisovans, whilst similar, are very distinct species. Their resemblance is incredible, with the differences between their species only being evident after very closely analyzing the original fossils. This intense level of examination that is required is what allowed the Denisovans to go undetected for so long. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.